Being an artist is coming to your barest soul. Um, you can illustrate, you can have fun with art, it can be a pleasing pastime, but to really consider being an artist, you have to be honest with yourself. And I, I would ask the question, are you willing to be that honest? Well, I've had a long road. Um, my career was spent in art teaching, which I loved. And um, even though I taught kindergarten through adult education, I love the little kids and I felt very closely related to children because I felt like a kid most of the time. I spent a lot of time alone as a child and I had a magic place which was a staircase off of my bedroom up into my attic in, in, my, in that old family house. And um, I would spend hours up there and I would look out over the whole city of Quincy because we lived on the top of a hill. It was magical for me. And um, I would draw, I would play, I would create whole worlds. And I think that was the basis for who I am as a person now. When I retired, I finally was able to play artist something that I believed I was ever since I was a child, but never really had the time to devote to it. It's a time for deep reflection. It's a time for you to be truthful to yourself. And that took some bit of journey. I started printmaking out in, in uh, Taos, New Mexico with a wonderful artist printmaker, Michael Vigil, and spent several summers doing that, enjoying not only the Southwest, but learning about myself. And it became definitely a spiritual journey. I began using symbols in my work. Um, I didn't know where they came from most of the time. It was something that was very introspective, something from the deepest part of me. But they were important to me. Um, and these symbols danced, they moved in space and cosmic awareness. For me, um, the circle is a cosmic symbol. There's no beginning and there's no end. It's a symbol of the sun, the origin of our universe. Um, to me, it's a symbol of the light, not only from a distance in our universe, but from within. The totality of us is um, the circle of energy of the heart. Back in about 2005, my husband got very sick. It became a journey for me in terms of understanding at a deep level about life, death, and a cosmic relationship. When you realize that an artist um, of any ilk, it takes time, it's a whole process. And it isn't, the imagery doesn't come overnight. Um, you can train yourself with technique all you want, but that doesn't make it art. What makes it art is your unique and individual voice, a voice that has something really important, fascinating, interesting, terrifying, perhaps, to say to the world. That takes uh, an evolution. It's an evolutionary process. This is just a representation of the development of my work in different years, different styles, but basically a spiritual comprehension. Um, and the imagery just came out of my mind for one reason or another. Art education is really important and it doesn't happen in the classroom. It happens by going and seeing the art. So you go to art openings, you go to galleries, you go to Boston and you see some of the wonderful art in the museums, you go to special exhibits. You learn to look with your eyes and you begin to absorb um, the environment of how art is displayed, how people appreciate it. And then you may become very intrigued, interested with a particular artist or a particular technique and you start doing your own study of it. I mean, it opens up a whole new world. And it really offers a great deal of personal sustenance. It offers a lot of joy. 
this is a textural piece that was done earlier. You know, that was involved with angels and birds and things that came from the sky. Um, this came from a show um, that, again, with uh, Kerouac words. And you can see that this is a monotype. And then up above, that's the painting. I, I guess it's been five years now, going on five years. Doesn't seem possible. Oh, this, this is, there was a whole series that I did on the ocean, and that was when I was leaving New Mexico, and I really needed to be near the ocean again. What we've been talking about in terms of the development of an artist. I have a group of artists who come and meet in my house once a month, and we talk, and um, we share. And um, this year we've been talking about the vulnerability of being an artist and how that takes form for each person. And it came to us that we should do a mask show. So each one of us is going to create mask, masks, whatever um, uh, form that takes. Um, and this show is going to be in November at Airlofts Gallery. It should be fun and very unique and telling. And what my concept is of me as a little girl and my experience as a child, and there's going to be a light behind it. And then this will be me, the adult me, which breaks open to see the child self. Words are really a very important part of my process. When I did this particular show on Jack Kerouac, um, I would delve into many of his writings, his poetry, his novels, and I would find a phrase, I would find a sentence that was just interesting to me, that resonated with me. I would write it down and I would have a whole board to look at. And then that, would bring me to the printmaking process. I would feel the energy of those words and I would make marks in the mark making process, the textures, the quality of the printmaking was infused with the feeling of those words. And then I look at them, I'm very rational and analytical about choosing what to take, how to put it together, how to piece it together collage it with the encaustic painting process, perhaps, and make the image clear for me and hopefully for the public. And it's interesting when I have shows on Kerouac, a lot of the times the phrase is not resonating to the person who pur purchases it and buys it, but rather just the image. Sometimes it is the words that they relate to. For instance, this here is, uh, this is the statue on the shelf. And this was in a show two years ago. His spirituality, his origins, his growing up as a child were deeply influenced by his Catholicism. And in this case, this was the influence of an old silent film about St. Teresa. Um, his mother had a plaster statue on the shelf in the house and he, he thought that it turned its head in the light of the, of the night. And so there's a phrase about that in one of his books. And so I found that to be pictorially very interesting. So this is um, mixed media with a, a print and then the rest is painted in encaustic. And this is um, an RNF block of paint. There are other producers of um, encaustic paint. So I can paint with it and mark my area. I can use another process of removing to make the lines, um, create textures perhaps with blocks. And I have started making the print 
with two passes on this um, handmade Japanese paper in relationship to the marks that are already made on the paper. A lot of it is intuitive and some of it is because I've done it before I know the effect that I'm going to get. So it's still heating on the plate. And what's wonderful about printmaking with hot wax is that it, it is totally absorbed into the paper. And different kinds of papers will give different effects. And you can see it coming through. If this was a heavier paper, you'd only have the image on the other side. A Japanese baron. And I'm putting this newspaper on top just to absorb the residue. I can also print on the back of this as well. Now, I love the mark making qualities, the spontaneity of what's happening, the circles. And I'm going to add a little bit of color. Now I'm just going to clean off that wax and any residue. Put an area of color down. This stencil will prevent it, hopefully, unless it leaks through, going beyond that. Here it is. So I have that one spot designated. Now I will continue with this. I will look at it. I will analyze it. I'll make a decision about what happens next if necessary. And that's what I mean about being honest with yourself because the more you're at the act of doing the thing, the act of creation, the more questions you have about yourself, the more you want to delve into this. It's um, a delicate balance between being unconscious and then moving into conscious decision making and then letting go. Play has a lot to do with it. Um, making mistakes, uh, not trying hard, just letting go, which is something the ego wants to do all the time. You always want to be in control and it's the worst mistake you can make when you're making art. You just have to go to that child self and just, if you see a group of little kids in a room and you give them art materials, there's no ego in play. It's just a direct process. I'm doing it, I'm loving it, I'm having fun, it's me. So the only guidance I could give someone interested in being an artist is to think about going to your childlike self. Okay, now I've warmed the surface. I've already put two layers and um, work with heat to bond it. And now I'm going to just kind of emphasize the white in this area that I've blocked out. I want to give it a little texture. I should have a little bit more wax in a few minutes and that needs to heat up, solidify. I can let this cool a little bit and then it will build up texture. We have to heat it first. So we can either use a gun or we can use a torch and then just glazing it so that it, um, you can see it, it gets milky and it's silky looking and you can decide how much you want it to fuse and then I can, I can keep adding layers on this. What I love to do afterward or in the process and you can see some of that other color bleeding because of the heat oil paint or oil crayons and work over that once it's solid and cooled and you can uh, find all those little interesting craggy places. You wipe with a cloth and um, the oil pastel gets in those little craggy places which is kind of fun. Now if I'm done with that I can very carefully remove the tape and that image is just very subtly different and 
I went to make the print thinking about these dark flowers, did mark making on the plate. Uh, I may have done two or three images, um, looked at the work, added some things, and this is wax that's superimposed on top. It just adds that little spot of color. It, um, it, it's a place for focus. And then I wanted to embed it with the, uh, the glossy wax around it so that there's a real focus and a sort of an inner sanctum look to it. When I was living in Littleton with my husband, um, I had heard about Lowell um, and came to visit and was very intrigued by it. And I actually ended up walking into the um, opening of airlofts and walking out and saying to my husband that we had just purchased a condo, <laughs> much to his chagrin. <laughs> but I, I just realized that this was going to be an artist community and I wanted to be a part of it. I just feel like everybody here, it's like we know each other. And it's a great new artist community. It's like a little Brooklyn, if you will. And everybody is just warm and friendly and interesting and uh, we have a really amazing community here so I do like it but I did come back from Santa Fe thinking that I would be living near the ocean so my dream is in some time in some place in some capacity to have a home a unit near the ocean a real sense of um, power this is sort of like my little altar that I have and I keep changing it and moving it around, but I still honor it. Um, this is my husband. And this was um, my most important teacher at Mass Art, Bob Newman. He just passed a year ago. Um, Lynn Bernay was a friend who was a fabulous, very creative. Uh, not only was she an actress in uh, New York and on Broadway, a dancer, but she was also a wonderful creative visual artist, and I met her in Italy. And this was my dear, dear friend, Linda Cordell, who was an amazing teacher and um, also a, a very well-known archeologist. Um, she was one of the first woman archeologists to go out to the Southwest and do digs, and this was like almost like a no-no at the time. So honored that I, know these people, that they've given me such a gift um, um, of self-knowledge, of love, kindness, intelligence. So I honor them every day. I have them there and I can see them. Artists go through this process of disillusionment and thinking they're not good enough or the work isn't good enough. And then you realize that it's self-talk and uh, all that disillusionment about self is something that you incur. You just go out and do it. You just do it and you honor yourself. And that's a, something that I would have to pass on to a young person who was interested in becoming an artist. Honor yourself. Mm -hmm.